Turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than the thousand elsewhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let's call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, shepherds, the Lord says this, trouble for the shepherds of Israel who feed themselves. Shepherds ought to feed their flock, yet you have fed on milk. You have dressed yourselves in wool. You have sacrificed the fattest sheep, but failed to feed the flock. You have failed to make weak sheep strong, or to care for the sick ones, or bandage the wounded ones. You have failed to bring back strays, or look for the lost. On the contrary, you have ruled them cruelly and violently. For lack of a shepherd, they have scattered to become the prey of any wild animal they have scattered far. My flock is straying this way and that, on mountains and on high hills. My flock has been scattered all over the country. No one bothers about them, and no one looks for them. Well then, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, I swear it, it is the Lord who speaks. Since my flock has been looted, and for lack of a shepherd is now the prey of any wild animal, since my shepherds have stopped bothering about my flock, since my shepherds feel themselves, feed themselves rather than my flock, in view of all this, shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. The Lord says this, I am going to call the shepherds to account. I am going to take my flat flock back from them, and I will not allow them to feed my flock. In this way, the shepherds will stop feeding themselves. I shall rescue my sheep from their mouths. They will not prey on them anymore. For the Lord says this, I am going to look after my flock myself and keep all of it in view. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord. the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. 
My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Let your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You go to my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour and again at about the ninth hour, he went out and he did the same. Then at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more standing round, and he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You go into my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, Call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired at about the eleventh hour came forward and received one denarius each. When the first came, they expected to get more, and they too received one denarius each. They took it but grumbled at the landowner. The men who came last, they said, have done only one hour and you have treated them the same as us, though we have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. He answered one of them and said, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why be envious, because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. You go into my vineyard too, and I will give you a fair wage. Another way to read the vineyard owner's response in today's parable would be, I will give you purpose and decent work. I will give you what you need and take care of you. God gives us far more than what is just. A mature faith isn't a business relationship. God doesn't just pay us for working towards the kingdom. God gives us what God wants us to receive in love. So then what, what is a gift? If I give something to a person with the expectation or hope that they will then do something for me in return, that's not a gift. At best, it's an investment, and at worst, it's a bribe. Gifts are freely given. If I think I deserve something and then I get it, it's not a gift either. It's a payment to which I'm entitled, the return of something I have already claimed in my heart. Gifts are not transactional. Gifts or graces don't have attachment on either end. I cannot earn them and I can only receive them. Why be envious? Because I'm generous. This is the same question that the father could ask the son who stayed at home in the parable of the prodigal son. 
And if I'm honest with myself, I could often answer yes. But as soon as I recognize my envy, it seems absurd. It reveals a misunderstanding of how God works, how love works, or even how people work. Of course, someone can be generous to whomsoever they wish. There's a logic of finite love hidden in that envy. If God loves and cares for someone else, God can't love and care for me as much. As humans, our time and energy and resources may be limited in that way, but God's love transcends those limits. The vineyard owner in this parable cares for each worker by providing what they need to live for the day, regardless of when they were able to start working or how deserving their peers judge them to be. The question then becomes, can I be grateful that God is generous to others? Can I share in the joy of God's generosity? We'll now make our bidding prayers together. If you'll stand, please. The Lord is calling us to the work of prayer and desires to open our hearts to him. We pray that more young men and women will heed the, word, the voice of God and offer themselves for work in his vineyard. Lord, hear us. We pray for the grace not to be envious of others, but to rejoice in the gifts God gives them. Lord, hear us. We pray that those who do a voluntary church work in all our parishes may do so selflessly and with a generous spirit. Lord, hear us. We pray that in doing God's will, we will not count the cost, but be happy simply to be his instruments. Lord, hear us. We pray for all pastors of the church, that they care for the flock entrusted to them in the spirit of the Good Shepherd. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. Father, you love us with a love which is beyond all we could ever hope for or imagine. You are attentive to every need before ever we know them, know them ourselves. Look upon us, your children, and look kindly upon us as we call upon you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and this wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we accept you by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice you inside this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <clears throat> thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body of blood, from all my sins and forever evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, as you said, don't say The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. A spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.